guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming a video that is kind of a combination of my palettes I'm returning slash one video seven reviews, which I've never really done before, slash like a makeup confessions kind of video. So either you guys are gonna be really empathetic towards my situation or you're gonna be like, you are absolutely crazy that this is so excessive you're such a makeup addict and none of this i'm going to deny i'm totally a makeup addict plus combined with the holidays and my birthday because december is my birthday month caused me to just like buy every palette that caught my attention in 2017 and now that things are kind of starting to calm down i've played with these palettes and i've kind of realized that uh, some of them I love and they're worth keeping and some of them aren't so great and I totally fell into the hype and I need to either declutter them or return them to store and get my money back so I can invest in things I actually want in my collection. So hopefully if you guys kind of understand where I'm coming from, I would encourage you to keep watching this video if you are not interested in stuff like this and you're going to get really annoyed with me about buying things that I maybe just didn't really need, then I would say don't watch this video because you're going to get annoyed and it's not worth it. Other than that, I do have a few announcements. I just want to remind you guys, I do have a giveaway going on on my channel right now. It ends the end of January. I'm going to leave the video and the rules in the description box, so please check there. I'm also going to have timestamps for this video, so if there's a particular palette that you are interested in, just check the description box. I will have timestamps on when each of those reviews start, so you don't have to watch the whole video if you're only interested in my thoughts on a particular palette. Um, the other thing is, if you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Karen Harris. I do upload every other day, so you do get quite a bit of content from me, and I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel. Yeah, well, that's it. So let's start with the review. I basically have seven palettes. I'm sure you can tell from the title of the video. And I wanted to start with most expensive and then work my way down to the least expensive palette. So my most expensive purchase in the last month or so is the Viseart Grand Pro Volume 1 palette. Now, this retails for $175. And I actually got mine on Beautylish, so I have the three easy payments. Now, if you are not familiar with Beautylish, it's basically an online makeup retailer. It's very similar to Sephora, but they have incredible customer service. Everything is like custom wrapped. They have this um, payment plan, which is nice. It's not like a credit card or anything, but if you make a purchase on their website of $100 or more, you can just break that down into three easy payments. So on the anniversary date of your purchase, it'll just withdraw the amount off your account. So for this Viseart palette, I basically pay $58.33. And so yeah, that's kind of the rundown on that. So what ended up happening with this palette was, I actually love Viseart palettes. I have three of the regular, would you call these regular? I guess this is their current offering. These are a part of their permanent line. So you can buy these anytime. And these retail for 80 bucks. So they're not cheap either. And I have three of them. And I love their mattes, and these are all matte palettes. I don't really like their shimmers, so I am never really planning on buying any of their palettes with shimmers, but I have these three, three, which is the neutral mattes, the warm mattes, and the dark mattes. So I pretty much have everything I need in here. And I thought this Grand Pro palette was going to be a Muse Beauty Pro exclusive. And I didn't really want to dish out $175 in one go for this palette. And I didn't really know if they had like a good return policy or anything like that. But when I saw that this was launching on Beautylish, I was like, oh my gosh, I can totally get it because they have a good payment plan so I won't feel as guilty. So it's like I'm buying a palette each month and I get this giant palette from Wizziad. Now these are 30 matte shades. Um, there are 24 new shades and then 6 repeat shades, like their favorite shades. And each pan is 0.07 ounces. Now I believe this basically contains the most product out of all the palettes I'm going to talk about today. These pans are the size of the longer pans in the Too Faced chocolate bar palette so that kind of gives you an idea on how much product you're getting so I don't dispute that this is a good deal if you can get it on the payment plan perfect 
The issue I have with this palette is I'm only really attracted to this row of really bright shades. This row is really the most unique row in this palette. Everything else does get pretty repetitive for me. So I'm like, okay, I barely use these palettes. What the heck am I going to do with this almost $200 palette? Which is why I'm contemplating returning it because I just feel like once the hype wears down, I'm not going to keep reaching for this. Plus, it's a limited edition palette. And I feel really bad because I love these Yards palettes and I want to find a reason to hold on to it. But after a little while of staring at it, this whole block of shadows are basically the same color on repeat. So I just wish they had made a smaller palette with like this row, a shade of smoky rose, and then a shade of light rose and made it a little more cheaper. I would have really loved that. I would love to see shades like this that are more bright but jewel toned really actually reminds me of the e.l.f. Jewel Pop palette, which we'll talk about later. So after I did some research, you, you know Vizzy Art is a pro brand. So this is really geared to pro artists. That's why you're getting a lot of product. Some of these products can be used as cheek products. You can use these as contours. You can use them as brow shades. So it does have a lot of utility. It's just for my lifestyle and already owning three of the Viseart palettes, I really don't see myself continuing to utilize this one. So that's my only complaint. If you already have a lot of the Viseart palettes, maybe you want to keep collecting them. Um, that's a good option, but for me, I just feel like it would be a total waste to keep this because I just feel like I won't get any use out of it. Also, if you want to try Vizzy Art for the first time, this is an awesome way to do it because you're getting 30 shadows and it's a really awesome variety. I think it covers pretty much all the shades in the palettes that I have right now. So if this had come out first, before I bought any of these, I would have gone straight for this. But since I already have three palettes, I just think it's a complete waste of my money to hold on to this palette. So I will be returning it back to Beautylish. Okay, so the second palette on my list of reviews is the NARS Narcissus Wanted Eyeshadow Palette. Now this again came out during the holiday season and of course I was crazy attracted to the packaging. And I've had really good luck with NARS palettes because usually I stay away from them because I feel like the quality is just not as good as their singles. Um, but I really liked this Bore de Plage face palette and I really loved this veil palette from the holidays but these are both face palettes and I thought there was a significant improvement in their face palette so I thought hey let me try the NARS eyeshadow palette this one retails for um, this one retails for $59 making it the second most expensive palette in this review video and it contains 12 shades and each square is 0.04 ounces of product this is limited edition and NARS describes this as containing buttery mattes, lustrous satins, and glittery metals. So I was really, really excited. Of course, this is like my 1800th warm tone palette, so I really wanted this to blow me away. And I actually saw this featured in many people's end of year favorites, but I honestly don't know what they're talking about. These mattes suck. And the shimmers, I feel like you definitely have to use a glitter glue. And I don't know, I, I'm just not impressed. And I'm not impressed by the satins. I don't think they do anything out of the ordinary. And yeah, I'm just not impressed. I love the packaging. I love how small this is. I think it's a really great idea. But man, this is such a letdown for me. Only because I'm so used to really, really pigmented formulas and really beautiful foils and the shimmery shades I think are their is it called their haywire shadows they have those like mini shadows that have a lot of glitter I think you're definitely going to want to use a glitter glue to use those shadows and I don't know I just feel like for $59 this is so lacking um what I was expecting from it and I know they have that other palette which is more like orange tones. I can't remember what it's called but I'll throw up a picture so you guys know what I'm talking about. I've heard mixed reviews on that one too. I've heard some people really love it. Some people really think it's not that great. And unfortunately for me, these were a miss and this palette was a miss. So I will be returning this palette as well. Let me know if you guys picked up this palette, what your thoughts are. Actually, let me know on all of these palettes because I'm sure some of you might have different opinions than me. Some of you might agree with me. Definitely let me know which side of the fence you are on. 
when it comes to these arguments. Also, I do have swatch videos for pretty much everything on my review list here today. So if you want to see swatches, I will pop them in the cards or link them down below as well for you guys. So that is everything I have to say about this palette. Very disappointed. Definitely taking this back to store. Okay guys, so the third palette I wanted to talk about is the Too Faced Chocolate Gold Palette. Now this one is the third most expensive palette in this list. It retails for $49, which is $10 cheaper than the NARS palette. Has duochrome, matte, and metallic shades. Also claims to have real gold and cocoa powder. Has 14 shades that are 0.03 ounces, two shades that are 0.07 ounces, and uh, yeah, has a, let me see what the shelf life is on this, 12 months. On the NARS palette, it was 24 months. Now, this is the very same layout as the regular chocolate bar palette. It has a nice whiff of chocolate vanilla when you open it up, so if you're into that. And I pretty much played with all the shades in this palette, and I must say, Too Faced has really come a long, long way with this palette. They have done so much better than what I'm usually used to with them. The metallics are pretty buttery and beautiful um, for the most part. The only thing with this is there's only really like two-ish transition shades and then there's a black and a brow bone. So if you are trying to use this for multiple like different looks, I think you're going to have a hard time. This is going to be a really great palette for a beginner because it's all laid out. Literally all you need to do is put this in your brow bone, this in your crease, this to smoke it out if you really want to, or you can use it as liner, and then pair it with any of the shimmer shades as a lid shade. So other than that, you're really not going to get much creativity from this, but uh, I'm on the fence with this one. I feel like it's a really good palette for Too Faced standards, but it's by no means like a really good palette as far as like what's on the market right now so I'm really really conflicted I feel like $49 is really high-end I don't know I feel like 50 bucks is a lot for this palette for me because it's just so basic I feel like I can find most of these shades in the colored rain cheers to beauty palette which I love the color rain formula I feel like I already have all of these shades so I think this is gonna be an awesome palette for a beginner but for me it's just very very basic I'm glad I got it to try it out but I don't know I feel like if you're like a veteran youtuber this is not gonna be something that's gonna blow your socks off so for that reason I am gonna be returning this and just remember my disclaimer guys, if it bothers you that I'm talking about stuff that I bought, I know I bought too much, but at the end of the day I'm realizing I bought too much and I'm trying to get it under control, so like don't come for me because I'll, <laughs> I, I already like disclaimed that I know that I bought too much makeup. And I don't know, I think this is kind of awesome because this way you guys get to hear my thoughts on the palette, so if you don't want to hear about it, don't watch the video. Super simple. So. Yeah, those are my thoughts on the Chocolate Gold Palette. Okay guys, next palette I picked up is the Urban Decay Distortion Palette. Now this one is $48, cruelty free, and is number 4 on my list. This contains 15 shades at 0.06 ounces. There's 10 traditional shades and 5 holo type shades. I really was attracted to this palette, mostly because of the packaging. I mean, look at this. It's gorgeous freaking packaging. And it came out as a Rouge exclusive, and I didn't want to miss out on picking this up. And of course, they this one and the NARS palette both sold out during that Rouge exclusive, so I was like really glad I got it. But at the end of the day, I am really not getting any use from this palette. I have no like inclination to try it. These jewel tone shades are not my cup of tea and they're all like shimmery jewel tones and I just don't know why I wouldn't, if I wanted like a holo look like this, why wouldn't I just use the ABH Aurora Glow Kit over my already existing eyeshadows? I don't know why anyone would need this palette. I'm wearing the purple shade which is Mind Game in my inner corner but I really didn't feel like this palette was anything extraordinary like once I got it and for 48 bucks I'm like uh like I don't want this every day at all and I don't want this for a special occasion so I really like the packaging I think this is really cool I haven't seen really any reviews on this palette so I don't know if it just got like missed by the beauty community 
Uh, but yeah, I'm not keeping this, guys. It was like way too expensive and it really is not inspiring me at all. I don't reach for this at all. I've honestly only swatched it. I haven't even used any of these shades on my eyeballs. I'm sure it's good because it's Urban Decay, but I just don't like it. I'm really upset with myself for buying all this stuff. You guys have to know that. But that doesn't mean I should keep it. So I'm just going to reiterate, I know I bought too much, but this is me like trying to take matters into my own hands and get some of this stuff out of here before it just accumulates. Okay, guys, next palette I want to talk about is the House of Flash X Sephora collaboration palette. This is also cruelty-free and retails for $45. They came out with two palettes six liners and two sets of lashes this is the secret garden palette there's another one called like versailles or something like that and this is limited edition and comes with 16 shades so house of lashes is obviously a lash company so they do have this little drawer for your lashes and i actually recently picked up from them this little lash holder case because one of my goals of 2018 is to try and get into lashes more because I do think they're really pretty. So yeah, I got that, so I really don't need that part of the palette. And yeah, so basically, I was really attracted to these shades when I saw it online, when Trend Mood posted about it, I was like, wow, that is so cool. But once I got the palette, I realized it's just really a neutral palette with like three pops of green. And this thing is beautiful, but it's so freaking bulky. Like, what the heck am I going to do with this other than have it sit on my vanity, which is not a good enough reason to keep it. Also, so you know, um, there's 16 shades at 0.05 ounces, so you do get a decent amount of product. This part does also come out, so I'm sure if you wanted to depot these, you could. I was also really attracted. I love these, like, baby puke colors. But in the end, I basically realized I got a very boring neutral palette, not only that I really don't like the formula in this palette it is very freaking dusty like I don't know if you can see it but it's super dusty super messy I used it like one or two times and I was like no thank you so for that reason I'm definitely returning this like I said I I've given these a chance I've had them sit there some of them I'm really not even wanting to pick up and this is just like too messy for me I if I need like neutral mattes, I'll grab my Viseart palette. I don't need to reach for this. So because of that reason, I will be returning this palette. Okay guys, number six is the Violet Loss hashtag palette. Now, I actually filmed a get ready with me video featuring this as well as a swatch video. And this is what the inside of the palette looks like. This is honestly one of my favorite color combinations from all the palettes I'm talking about today. And these shadows are incredible. Violet Voss makes a really good eyeshadow formula. I have a lot of their palettes already. I have the Ride or Die, Laura Lee. I have the Holy Grail palette. Do I have anything else? Oh, I used to have the Taupe Notch. No. I had the Matte About You palette. I did end up declaring that because I never fucking used it. I just have the Viseart palettes if I'm feeling like wearing a matte formula. So I never reached for that one, so I'm glad I got rid of that. Also, random side note, if you guys do want to shop my Gently Used Makeup, I do have my Poshmark account linked down below. I would 100% recommend you guys checking it out because I just got this whole setup behind me, like the Alex drawers and stuff like that, and I'm really trying to declutter, so please feel free to check out my Poshmark because I'm sure you guys will end up saving a ton of money because I have some really good name brand products that I just want to get rid of because they're not doing anything in my cupboards and my drawers, so... Definitely check that out. But anyway, back to this palette. So it's a warm cranberry palette, and all of Violet Voss's eyeshadows are infused with jojoba oil, so they're very buttery. Check out the swatch video I have for this palette. It'll definitely give you a good idea of how good this palette is. So yeah, I like it. 24 month shelf life, which is pretty standard. 1.26 ounces of product in this palette. So not terrible, but this palette I actually really really like. This one I feel like I will get use out of so I'm planning on holding on to this palette. I just love the combinations. These shades are so cool. I think this is kind of like 
a knockoff of the Natasha Denona Lila palette. So if you can't afford the Lila palette or you just don't want to pay the price or you don't like the Natasha Denona formula like me, I would 100% recommend checking this out because Violet Voss makes a damn good eyeshadow palette. So very happy with this purchase. Okay, so this is the last palette I want to talk about. This is the cheapest one on my list. It is $10 and it is the fourth installment from their Mad to Mad for Matte series and this is honestly my favorite one that they've had. I love these shades. I feel like this is basically a palette full of crease colors. It's actually the shade, this purple shade is the one I have in my crease today and then I just topped it off with a ColourPop eyeshadow. So I just think these are the best from the Mad for Matte series. I didn't like the smoky one because those shades just like muddied together for me. And the second palette, which is like the plum colored shades, I didn't think were very pigmented. The first one I don't own, so I really like this one though. So if any of you have been wondering about this palette, it's good. I would pick it up, especially if you can get it on like free shipping or something like that. And basically there are 10 matte shades in here. It is cruelty free and vegan and the net weight, so the total weight in shadows of the palette is 0.42 ounces. So you're not getting a ton of product, but guys, this is a $10 eyeshadow palette. Like, are you kidding me? Plus, how fun is this to travel with? So really all you would need to do is take this with you because there's a brow bone, there's a black shade if you want to smoke anything out. Everything else will work with most shades and then you can take like your favorite pigment or a ColourPop Super Shock shadow with you and you're basically good to go. I love how small and compact this is and I think the price is amazing. So this one is definitely going to be a keep in my collection. Okay guys, that is everything I wanted to talk about in my one video seven reviews palette. I hope you guys kind of understood the concept here. I didn't want to dedicate a individual video for each of these palettes because some of them I just didn't really like and I really didn't have a ton to say about them and with YouTube everything is so so timely so I just thought this would be kind of a fun way to review a bunch of palettes for you guys and hopefully it was useful if you have any questions on any of the palettes or you want me to go more in depth or check something out for you just let me know down in the comments I read all my comments so I'll definitely be down in the comments helping you guys out if you have any questions. But other than that, I really don't have anything else for you guys. Like I said, don't forget to enter my giveaway. The information is down in the description box. I do upload every other day, so I hope you will consider subscribing to my channel so you can keep up with my future uploads. And that's it guys. I will catch you in the next one. Bye!